Hello and welcome to th Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and as you can see on screen we're not going to do Sudoku today we're going to try and do a logic puzzle. Now I say try and do a logic puzzle and that's because this is a puzzle called Country Road and I certainly don't remember ever having solved a Country Road puzzle before so this is going to be an edition where basically I'm a novice I'm going to be trying to solve this puzzle as many of you will be just by reading the rules and you know, logically approaching it and without the benefit of too much experience. I mean, obviously, I have done a lot of logic puzzles in my life and hopefully that will hold me in some sort of good stead. But this <laughs> this could be a rather embarrassing video. Um, the puzzle itself uh, that we're going to try is by Jonas Gleim, the brilliant constructor from Germany. And it's been recommended to us by Philip Bloomer, uh, who also goes under the pseudonym Glum Hippo. If you frequent the Sudoku forums, you will no doubt be familiar with Glum Hippo's work. Um, now, what I quite like about this puzzle is, look, um, it appeared on Logic Masters Germany and Jonas has written in the grid using the shapes, logic, and you need a bit of an artistic license at the bottom, but you can sort of see Masters um, being sketched out by the shaded blocks, which is very, very cool. Um, now, this country road is apparently the invention of the Japanese company Nikoli way back in the day, as so many of the great pencil puzzles, um, uh, well, Nikoli invented uh, an awful lot of them. Um, and But I don't remember ever, ever solving one of these. It certainly never appeared on Nikoli's website as one of their interactive solving puzzles. So, yeah, and I, I don't remember seeing it in sort of World Puzzle Championships. I'm sure it did appear and maybe it still does. But, yeah, it could be quite interesting. As I say, this puzzle dates back to March 2018. Now, let me read you the rules. We've got to draw a closed loop that consists of horizontal and vertical lines between cells from cell center to cell center and that does not cross or touch itself. The loop visits each boldly outlined area exactly once. Clues indicate how many cells within an area are used by the loop and non loop cells are not allowed to touch orthogonally if they are in different areas. Okay, now I found an example of one of these puzzles on the internet. So let's just take a stare at this and see if we can understand what we've got to do. So I can see there's a loop in the solution. I can see that the two region, look, that's been visited, two, had two of its cells visited. I can see that every area has been visited. And I guess I can see, if I really think about it, that if there is a, a cell that does not have loop in it, then every orthogonally connected cell with that cell that's not in its area does have loop in it. Okay, yeah, and the, the top right, obviously, that doesn't, although that doesn't have loop in it, it's also the two orthogonally connected cells are in its area, so they don't have to have loop. Right, so this is a somewhat interesting rule set. As I say, this puzzle's been recommended, so it should be very good. We're going to be using Pemper software today um, to solve it. Um, because we need to draw lines and I guess what do we need to do loop probably line or OX because I like the line or OX version because as we saw in the Fistenmafel puzzle we did the other day that allows me to draw um, zeros where I know a cell has to be loop X is where I know a cell doesn't have to be loop and of course to drag a loop shape as well so we're all good to go do have a go your yourselves first click the link under the video as usual and with that Let's get cracking on what could be a very strange edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where nothing gets cracked at all. Um, now, how would you start a country road puzzle? And this is going to be an embarrassing edition for me as well, because I know that there are going to be people watching this video who are very familiar with country road and are thinking, why are you being so slow, Simon? Well, this is what happens if you have no experience with a puzzle. Um... All right. What was the? Oh, hang on. Let me just go back to the rules again. So, the loop visits each boldly outlined area exactly once. Ah, right. Okay. So I can do something with this G shape in the grid that has five in it, because if the loop visits this G exactly once, it means we can't do something like this. 
the loop can't take these five cells in the G because if it did that, clearly the loop has entered the five region twice. So the cells that are loop in the five region have got to be connected to each other. And you can see that there are five of them. So the stem, if you like, of the G, this square must be loop because if it's not loop, I can only get four squares at the top and then we would have to you know, enter and exit the, five, the G region twice. So this has got to be loop, which means this has to be loop as well because for exactly the same reason. Okay, now <laughs> that doesn't seem to be hugely helpful if I'm honest. Um, oh, I know what I can do. If every, if every region gets visited, those two squares must be in the loop. Um, I don't think the shading is in. I think the shading is just there to show the logic master's uh, sort of title or the theme. I don't think it means anything as far as the actual logic is concerned. One here. So exactly one of these cells. Ah, okay, so this square then, because of this this if this if this square is not loop, then every orthogonally connected square with this square that's not in its area, so those two squares, and that one in fact, would have to be loop, and that would break the one. Um, because the one can only have one loop segment in it, so that must be loop. Uh, okay, I'm really not sure what I'm meant to do here. Uh, let me. I wonder if there's anything to do with the corners that we can, you know, that's sort of a general principle around these these puzzles. Let's think about that. So, yeah, okay. Well, this this square can't not be loop because if this is not loop, that has to be loop, and then the loop would go into the corner and couldn't get out, and it wouldn't be a loop. So that must be loop. Now, problem is the other corners. They don't have that same geometry with the areas around them, so that doesn't look terribly helpful. What about the two region? So let's imagine this square was loop. If that square's loop, right? Okay. So if the, if that square's loop, that square cannot also be loop because then those two cells would have to be x's, and the loop would enter and exit the two region twice. So we can say as a general principle, wherever you get a loop segment in the two region, the opposite corner must not be loop. And that, okay, that's always going to be helpful. Not loop is always going to be helpful because that's going to give us cells outside, which are then loop again. Right, goodness. Um, Problem is, I've really made almost no progress here. So there must be some. There must be something in the rules. Hang on, I'm going to go back to the rules again. That I'm not figuring out here. Does not touch cross. I mean, it's fine to say the loop doesn't cross or touch itself. I've not actually got any loop segments in yet to use that constraint. Visits each area exactly once. Clues indicate how many cells are used. Right. Ah, okay. Okay, so let's have a look at this um, single region here. Yeah, ah, okay. Now, can this exit like that? And the answer is, I think it's no, because we're only allowed to visit a region once. So there can only be one loop segment going in and one loop segment going out. The boundary of a region, yeah, this feels important. The boundary of a region can only be cut twice. Once on the once by the loop on the way in and once by the loop on the way out. So this region, if I tried this, this the N shaped region has now had its border cut twice and therefore that would cause the loop to close because we couldn't have the edge being cut three times. So, aha, uh -huh. this means that no arrangement where the loop 
does this or this is ever going to work. So there is a loop segment coming down into the T here. Ah, now, okay, right, sorry, sorry. This is how we should have started this puzzle. We should have thought about the fact that yeah, look at this U area. This U area here only sees two other regions. It sees the T above it and this sort of P-shaped region here. I think it's meant to be an E, but it looks like a P to me. So that means that the, the U-shaped area must, it must adjoin the P somehow and it must adjoin the T somehow. It can't adjoin the same area because then as we've just looked at with this shape, the loop would close. So, so the loop, we can sort of start to picture how the loop's going to work. It's going to go from the P into the U, up to the T, up to this single cell region, where it must exit into the N. Ah, yeah, yeah. Now look at this little triomino here. That only sees two regions as well. That sees the N, and it sees the, this, this shape above it. I don't know what, how we're going to describe that. But that means the loop must go from the N into this, into this. So, ah, now, now I'm getting interested in whether I can actually mark corners because that means that this N cannot exit into the three region. Because if it does, let's just... Let me just show you what I think will happen if we try and do this. You can see now that this uh, triomino region would have to do something like that. And of course now this region has got two segments of loop entering it. You can't exit again otherwise you're going to breach the conditions of the puzzle. So you'd have to close the loop. So all of this means that, let's go back here, we can X out those two squares. And we can X out this square because the T we know drops into the U. And then the U goes to the P. This region. Yeah, 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 this is great. This, this domino here only sees two regions. So we know the loop must come through here because it's the only way it can visit one of the two areas it's attached to. And the other exit if you like for this domino is going to be into the P. So the U goes into the P, this domino goes into the P, so the P cannot cross into the three. We know that we know the shape from which or into which the P or you know what I mean. It goes from the U to the P to the this domino down here. Um aha now that square's interesting all of a sudden. Let's look at this square. If that was a loop square, what would you do with this loop end? It would have to take a fourth position in the three region. So this is not loop, which means the orthogonally connected cells that are not in its region are loop. Look at this. Now we have got somewhere. This must be a corner. Um... Yeah, okay, and now we can think about the N region. Because if if this exits this cell there, for example, but it's the same logic if we do there, you can see that because we can only enter an area once, we've now got to pick up this loop segment cell before we exit. So we'd have to come down, and then we would exit here, and we would have to close the loop. So we can't, this cannot exit here or here. This is a strange puzzle. It must go here and then it must go up because it needs to exit into this triomino. Now. So this square can never be reached by the loop because again, if that's reached by the loop, the loop has to exit there, which doesn't, is never going to work. So that's an X, which means this is an O. Now this, oh, this is beautiful. So now this has to go here. That's the only way it can get to this square before it exits, which means these are both not in the loop, which means these are both in the loop. And look now, 
we've e entered this region we are going to have to pick up all of the loop squares before we exit it which means that square <laughs> is how we go that's not loop now so this is loop which forms a corner so we get to do this Ah, now, hang on a minute. If the P region exits into this domino, it does not exit into the 1 region. So this square is a problem for the 1 region. Because if, in order to get to this particular square, you'd have to do that. And of course, what that's doing is the 1 region is connecting to the P region. And you can see we've got three loop segments coming into this region, which is breaching the conditions. Each shape is only visited once this is so weird how important this is so this is x which means that's o that's o this is a corner so it must do that let's make them all circles so it looks prettier so now Now we know that either this one or this one is the correct cell of the one region. So if it's this one, that would happen. If it's this one, I don't quite know. It could come straight through, I suppose. But which one thing I've noticed from this is that the one region always connects with this Tetris shape on the right. I don't know if that matters, but hmm, I'm not sure if that matters. I'm not sure, but I'm going to try and remember it in case it does. OK, so ah, now the three region, I've got to put three connected squares. So it must take the middle two squares. Otherwise, we can't get that. This one is in a corner. So this is not taken. So this is taken. Um, okay, now, so what does all this mean? So the loop's general path, it goes up, it goes into the, t the triomino, it goes into the white region, and then it's got to do something, but we don't know what that thing is yet. Um... Okay, and from here, it could go sideways or it could go up. And I'm not sure whether I can tell at this juncture which one of those it does. I'm sure I'm annoying a lot of people though by being slow about this, so sorry about that. Um, hmm. No, I really am not sure. So. How do we get, I need to get a handle on the, how the path is going to move. This square is a bit interesting to me actually. Now why did I pick this square? Well, at this point without labeling this square, this L shaped region joins three different regions. It joins this sort of sideways L, the white one, and the two. But if I make that an X, now the L-shaped region only C can only enter and exit two, into two regions. Uh, this is, I think that breaks the puzzle. I think it breaks the puzzle. Now it's a bit difficult to see this, but the reason it breaks the puzzle is because the L region now has to connect to the... So that the loop broadly is going to have to do something like this. This this won't be exactly what it does, but if this is an X, because the L region en enters this white region, that would have to be forced. It then We then know it must exit into this Tetris region, so it's got to come around here somehow. So the question, the interesting question, this square has to be looped because it's opposite diagonal of this 2, is... Which region does this 2 exit into? 
This is beautiful. Which region does the 2 exit into? It has to exit into this G, this 5 region. But once it exits into this 5 region, it's got to dip down. It's got to dip down. And the 2 region is only connected with two regions, isn't it? I think that's right. It's connected with the L here and the G. The L being this sideways white one. So there's no, there's no possibility, for example, for it to go here and then double back on itself somehow because you can't get out of the two region without entering and exiting the 5 region. That's not going to work. So we have to go from the L into the 2, into the 5. And once we're in the 5, you've got to cut down this way. And you haven't visited. We've not visited this region. And if you haven't visited this region, it would, and it only has one entry and exit now. So this domino becomes absolutely stranded. So I feel that that is reasonably I'm sure that there is a cleverer way of doing that, but thinking about um, this square and its impact on what it forces the loop to do is, I think, sound logic. So this square has to be loop, which means its opposite corner is not loop. Now this sees those two squares, so they must now be loop. This is now a tunnel. Look, this top square has to be, the loop has to enter it, but it can't turn, so it must do this, which means it must carry on. Um, now. Oh, here's something interesting. This square being loop, one, two, three, four, five, means this square can no longer be loop because we know within the five region all the loop squares have got to be connected to each other so I can no longer get to this square if this is an X that is an O because it's an orthogonally connected square that's not loop right now look look at this I've, these two cells in this white region have got to be connected this is a huge deduction so this must be loop the loop must do this and now none of these squares can be loop. So everything orthogonal to these squares is not loop. All of those turn into white squares. This is, this is a corner, so it's got to do that. That forces the whole of this. Yeah, look at this. It's, it's, it's suddenly going a bit better. Um, this can't turn down, obviously, because now we're going to have this entering here and this L-shaped region has got three entry and exit points. So this has got to go into the two. Now the two, again, we can't, we can't do this because that's going to isolate the loop for obvious reasons, hopefully. So that must be loop. That means that's not loop, which means this is loop, which means it does this and that corner is not the loop. This has got to continue. That's another cell. Once, so, ah, okay. So now we know we know which cells of the far, of this G region are loop. If we try and include this square, we can't do it because we've got to get up to that square, and now we can't get down to this square and only take five cells. So this is not loop, which means this and this are loop, which forces this to come here. We must turn up. Oh. Hang on, that, did I make a mistake there? No, that, that's okay. It's got to do that. It's got to go up. That's got to go that way. Okay, no, this is good. Um, this must be in. I can't... I must come across, round, up, down, across, across. And all of that is forced. Okay, so we end up here. So I'm not doing too badly. At least I have, I'm sort of appreciating how the puzzle works a little bit. Right, now look at this F pentomino. I've not managed to get to its border yet, so I'm going to have to exit either through this square or through this square. Well, that means one of these squares 
has got to be an X. I don't know which one, but exactly one of them will be an X, which means that's an O, because it's going to be orthogonal to either of these X's. This has got to continue. OK. So what do we do now? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> that that O is wrong. I don't know why I've got an O there. I think that's a, a remnant. I've got to do either. I don't know which one of these is taken, but one of them is taken. But I, I think all I concluded when I was looking at this was that this this one region connects to the Tetris region with one loop segment. But I don't know whether its other entry point is from the top or from the bottom. I'm sure again there's probably a clever way of working that out but I don't know what it is. Um, now let's have a think about this. So if this drops down here we then know it would have to go this way. We know Ah, this is good. This is good and it's relatively straightforward. So if we take this square, what happens to the loop? Well, you can see we drop down into the one. And oh, actually, I, my first thought was that I had to turn right and that broke and it does break. But let me sh so I'll have to but but I've just noticed another way it could work. It still breaks, but it's complicated. So if it does this, you can see this loop segment needs to be picked up. So I'd have to come down and do this and close the loop. Why is this a problem? Well, these two squares, can ni neither of them can be loop and they're connected and they, they're not in the same region. So that this is wrong. But what I just noticed is there's no necessity for this to turn right. It could just duck down again. And then to avoid the problem with the X's, it could it could try something like that. Now, what's wrong with that? And the answer is there's still a big problem here. There's still a huge problem here, but it's it's harder to see. The problem is in this square. This square cannot be loop because if it's loop, we have to do that. And we've now entered this Tetris shape twice. But if this is not loop, we know this isn't loop. And now we've got two connected cells that are not loop across a boundary. So I think all of that is a very long winded way. Now I'm really hoping this undo function works today. It didn't work the other day. It was very annoying. Um, I think this means this square is not in, which means that square is in, which means that square is in, which means this square is in and ooh. Okay, now this this is this might break, but it looks okay actually because we've only taken one square from this region, so all the rest of this is xed, which means that must be O to avoid us breaking the rules, which means we have to go through all of those squares to here. Okay. And what do we do now? I don't know. So this loop and this loop are going to have to join up somehow and this loop and this loop are going to have to join up somehow. I'm sure there's a very simple way of seeing how to resolve this and I'm definitely going to study the comments in order to see what that simple way was. Um, I mean it feels this square feels important, doesn't it? If that's an X, that's an O. We'd have to do this. That might be possible though. I'm not sure what's wrong with that exactly. If this is an O on the other hand, 
all of the rest of this would be x. Both of these would be x's. That would be an O. And this just feels a bit bifurcated. It might it might work. It might not work. But I don't I don't really like just guessing and then going along a, in an enormous trail in order to prove or disprove something. Um, so let's stop again and have another think and see how. I'm sure there is a clever way of resolving this. Um, So let's think, which regions have to be connected? This region here. So if this is an X. Ah, uh, yeah, OK. Here's something a little bit interesting. Whether this is an O or an X, this Tetris piece, this gray Tetris piece always connects to this T. Um, now, why is that important? Well, it means I can draw a loop that square. That boundary can't be used. And neither can this one. So now this F pentomino has a choice about which region to take, but it's not it's not quite the choice it had before. Before it saw four regions. Now I think it only sees two regions. It can join this C or it can join this domino up here. And because we know that this Tetris piece and this join up somehow in order to close the loop, you can also see, hopefully, that it's not possible for this square to be in the loop. Because if it was, it's not. Uh, this, this loop, this has now been entered and exited by three loop segments. That does not work for us at all. So this is an X, which means this is an O, and this is an O. This is a corner O. Wow. Okay, so now... Ah, now this loop segment enters the C region for sure, which means this loop segment cannot enter the C region or the loop will close. So it goes around like this. Oh, this is beautiful, beautiful logic. So now, now think about how this, can this loop segment go this way or this way? And the answer is no, because this domino here will get stranded. So bizarrely enough, this has to duck down and come back up. It can never take this square. So this, this has to come up because it's going to have to go into this domino. This is an X, which means this is an O, which means that comes up there, turns in here. And OK. This is an X, so this is an O, so it must go up, up. There you go. So there we, we have actually figured out the bottom part of this loop and we've just got to figure out the top bit. So does this, and if this just closes here, this is not right because then both of these would be X, they cross a boundary, so that is not correct. We have to extend up and finish the puzzle like that, and that is how to finish Jonas's puzzle. Let me put in a load more circles to make myself feel better. Now, I fully appreciate that was probably awfully slow for some of you, um, but I have to say that, as usual with a puzzle constructor of Jonas's quality, it was a beautiful beautiful construction and even for um, a novice like me at country road puzzles i really enjoyed solving it so i hope you guys did too let us know in the comments um, and we'll be back later of course with another edition mark's got an interesting sudoku for you tonight see you soon on cracking the cryptic